A warm welcome back to Evergreen Valley on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 13. With me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, following on from the last episode, pretty much, I say directly after, seeding's done, liming's done. So, we are going to do our nitrogen, because our nitrogen sucks the big one. <laughs> uh, how are we looking now? See, pH value's perfect. We've sorted our pH out. Nitrogen, bad. Um, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to actually, I'm, I'm going to get censored. I'm going to put sensors on, I think probably on the John Deere. It's about 14 grand. It will give us a much more effective and accurate nitrogen requirement. So now our oats are in the ground. Once the crop's in, it then will know for the crop and the ground how much we're going to require. Uh, and then we'll roll it. Now, the electricity, I'm, I'm in desperate need of electricity. Thank you to everyone that reached out. Loads of people reached out. Nina was Johnny on the spot. Um, and I've looked through a few different options people talked about. And like I said in the previous episode, when I was driving around, there are a load of options. There are different things. The refinery up at the, up the hill, this coal refinery, which I will end up getting. It's just because I spent all my money <laughs> on factories and the field. Is 150 grand. But one of the ones that Nina mentioned and a few other people had suggested, there's the mini biogas plant, which I think I can fit on the ground just over there, but it's 55 grand, so I haven't got quite enough money at the moment. If we go up to the animal dealer, we can buy manure and slurry, which it takes. It takes straw as well. We have got some bales. I don't know if it will take it in bale form, but potentially. Um, and when that, that produces methane and electricity, the electricity we can set to distributing. That should help. Plus it gives us a little biogas plant. Why not? We'll get some um, digest that as a byproduct. So, yeah. That, at least for the time being, is the plan. Whether that plan will continue, I don't know. As you've already seen as well, just a very, very quick, I say quick, clip at the start. Um, I went and got some more concentrate, loaded that in the pickup, bought it over, topped up the water, and my liquid fertiliser is running again. I didn't do a sale today, and I'm regretting that now, um, because had I done, I would have had enough money to get the biogas plant immediately. So I've got to wait for that to chug away for a little bit now. Uh, but I think while that's chugging as well, I'll, um, like I say, we'll get on with our nitrogening although i'm going to now spend 14 grand i could lease sensors your, your passive and your actives um it's a good point actually i was thinking of getting i was going to get the sensors for the wing mirrors on this Oh, I said about the RTK station. I didn't show anyone the RTK, did I? There we go. Little little mini homemade RTK, which should, when you're hiring work and stuff, make things more efficient, apparently. Yeah, I've got some straw, haven't I? Hmm. But then if we go into... I'm just going to check the menu. Like I say, the store menu, there'll be music, so I'll avoid that. But I've got my little workshop thing here. We could get ourselves a set of the wing, wing mirror mounted sensors or we could get the crop sensor we've got a front three point link haven't we if we lease that that'd be a lot cheaper i've got my little insectoid antenna antennae and 10 one thousand two hundred to lease as opposed to 14 grand for for getting the wing mirror mounted one wing mirror set the wing mirror set are which way around is it? Passive. They will only work during daylight. 
this one, these ones, if you buy these, there's various different sensors, these, they're active, so you can use them all the time. Um, I, I kind of, uh, apparently, I think it, it makes, it's not necessary that, it doesn't do it, it what's the best way of putting it? When you look at the, the, the soil mapping, um, as I kind of looked at it as, it doesn't, I don't, I don't see it making any difference. It's supposed to be more efficient, more effective. I think it's more efficient in, in the fact that you're not using as much, and that's the point behind it, isn't it? Whilst you're getting exactly the same put down, you're getting what you require for the crop, for, for it to be saying perfect. Um, let's hold it back up. It, um, it's using less. I think that's the point behind it. It's, it's more efficient at realising what it needs. Because I think the last time I talked about these and said I, I couldn't see the point of them because they don't seem to be making much difference. And I'm looking visually at the screen and saying that this is all red and whilst it is going, you know, I'm getting a better coverage for the crop, um, I don't I don't see, but it is, yeah, it's the amount of fertiliser you're using, not what it actually looks like on the ground. If we open that up, it should come up now, bottom left. Should come up bottom left. There we go. So we're looking horrendous. Open that up. Open that up. I'm never quite sure with this, whether it needs to be I don't think it needs to be closer to the ground, but we'll put it closer to the ground just to be on the safe side. Uh, go back to that. It's going far wider than I thought it was going to, but that's alright. And again, it was that thing I remember when precision farming first came out. And you, you, I was, you, know, you kept looking down at the screen or checking the main screen. You'd look down while you put it down, like bottom left now thinking, that 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 should be it should be green it should you know it's red it should be green it should be way better but factoring in the fact that depending on the soil type depending on the crop in that soil type will depend on just how much is required to go in it doesn't have to be green green it just has to be the required amount going down what is needed we are getting through that faster than i thought we were going to but it's spreading a lot wider than i thought it was going to um and if you're ever putting this down, if you've never used it before and you're not 100% certain whether it is doing what it should be doing, is once you've put it down, if you've got the help window open, look down bottom right, precision farming, it now says pH perfect, nitrogen perfect. So if we go to our map and do that, then we go to our pH, which is okay, that's our liming. So depending on the soil type, and you can see the differences in the patches on you know, what soil type is there, which if we go that way, you can see the soil types. So we've got sandy loam and loam. That one's not too bad. We've got a little bit of silty clay on there as well, but not horrendous. Most of it is the same thing. Um, but if we go back across, for the crop that's in the ground, which is oat, and for the soil type, that's exactly where it needs to be. We're in the zone. It hasn't got to be at 200 kilograms per hectare. It hasn't got to be green green it just needs to be right for the crop and the soil type so that's you know and again i'm teaching granite suckers so uh, okay so the most people that are watching this you already know this if, if you know most people will have played with it and i'm saying most that is a generalization that might not be the case um i have used it a bit not on every let's play not all the time i'd say i do like it i prefer it because You've got that one pass situation now. I'm, I'm, I'm putting down my pH with my lime. I'm putting down my fertilizer. My nitrogen's going down now. I don't have to do it again. You know, that system, if you go standard and you've got to do two, you've got the light blue and then the darker blue, 50%, 50%, this is one hit, it's in. Um, obviously I know on the normal one, depending on what you're putting down with, you can do double application rate, which you can put it all down in one go if you want to. And I do like on precision farming the spot application spraying for weeds and that kind of stuff. You probably shouldn't go over someone else's crop. But I'm sure they won't mind. Yeah, so the, pro the problem I've got at the moment is I've got all these fantastic whiz-bangy productions, all this cool stuff that's on the map, which I think is awesome. I personally think is awesome. I don't, yeah, I'm not going to go into that again. Get, get, uh, 
told I'm just complaining all the time and I should be grateful and I, I, I totally get that I'm not going to go into it <sighs> and breathe so um what was I saying yeah the factories I need electricity I, I just haven't got enough <laughs> I've so I'm spread too thin. What I don't know, and again, it is, kind of, it is down to how it is distributed. I know I said that in the last episode. I, I, I had two generators running and I was running fine. I, it didn't seem to be a problem. I put the third in just to make sure, absolutely certain. I bought the marble sawmill and that was enough. All of a sudden, three or four of my factories weren't getting any electricity at all. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll put in a fourth and then I'll put in a fifth. I've got five generators running over there and I've still got every hour three or four of my factories are running out of electricity they're just it's just not enough which when i've got five small generators running when two was fine before i've only added in two factories and all of a sudden i, I cannot get enough going out to them so i don't even know i mean that's the problem because of the way the distribution of things works if i get the biogas plant and put the biogas plant in i've got a hope that's going to produce enough electricity to to back it up because the way I'm looking at it is that's going to cost me 55 grand then I'm going to go up to the, the animal dealer and we're going to buy from them some manure and slurry I've got some straw like I say we could put that in as well but if it distributes in the same way is it it could be end, end up being 55 grand wasted where I could take that 55 grand and Put in another three. <laughs> Could put another four, another four generators. And admittedly, they're going to require diesel to keep them running. But I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one. Isn't it? But again, you'd think if if you're if you're the if you're the architect, if you are the town planner, let's just say that if you're the town planner. And you've decided you're going to put all of you know all of these factories are going to be allowed permits to operate within the um, the the town boundary kind of thing. That that would be adjusted to allow for that. That's why I'm thinking maybe the coal refineries, the coal plants on the map, maybe they are designed to do that. So I don't know. Mind you, the generators are part of this, aren't they? They're not. They're not a third party. Their generators are part of this, aren't they? I went way too far. Hmm, don't know. Musings. Musings. We shall see. How's everyone feeling today? I'm feeling a little bit more positive today, I'd say. You know, there's, there's, always, there's always niggly things that get on your, on your, you know. When I was saying about the van yesterday, I, I sat all of yesterday thinking, okay, I was waiting for mods to drop. And then um, DJ messaged me and said, oh, mods have dropped, there's only the two today. And I went off, oh, what's that mods? That's weird. There was two on PC, nothing on console. Um, and I kept thinking, I should hear from VW about the van today. They should be ringing me to, to come and collect it. Nothing. Didn't get a phone call at all. It's slightly worrying, considering it's Saturday today, and I think they close at 1 on a Saturday. Um, and then it's Bank Holiday Monday. So I'm not going to get the van back till at least Tuesday. And then your mind starts whirring. Oh, please tell me there's not more wrong with it. Please tell me it hasn't gone terribly wrong. Please tell me, you know. You never know, do you? you get that phone call and say, look, we're really sorry, but someone's crashed into your van in the car park or something. You know, that kind of thing. But just my luck. <laughs> Let me just go over that little bit that I missed. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I would say probably up at 80% today, I think. I'm feeling quite positive. I've been invited over to one of my daughters, Mrs. Silly Peas. Wait, it's that funny thing. Um, Mrs. Silly Peas always done this thing. I don't know why she does it. She's their mum. The kids like you better than they like me. They always have done blah, blah, blah. You know. <laughs> because I, I worked at the school. Well, I was a postman for a long time. When I worked at the school, and I would take the kids to school every day. And I worked at the school. I taught some of my kids. You know, you'd think there'd be a conflict of interest, but there wasn't. I treated them equally as poorly as everyone else. No, I'm joking. Um, there was no favouritism, never was. And um, she always makes, you know, it becomes this joke thing. And to be fair, my daughters are a nightmare for it. They'll go out shopping for the day. And the kids always did this thing, like if we would do our food shopping or weekly shopping and we'd pop into town, the kids would say, oh, think of us, because they'd want you to bring them back treats or toys or, you know, whatever it might be. 
So we do that now when they go places. They'll think of us and you laugh, you know. So my daughters will go shopping in town or they'll go and do food shopping or whatever they're doing. And they'll come back and they're like, oh, Dad, we've got you this, you know. And they'll, you know, I've got a bit of a penchant for li uh, licorice all sorts. Um, they'll buy me a little pack of licorice all sorts. Or, you know, and they don't get anything from me, silly Pete. I don't know why. <laughs> Honestly, it drives her mad. It really does. Um, and often like they'll come in and say, oh, we're thinking of getting takeaway tonight. Do you want anything, Dad? I was like, well, go and check with your mum as well because she might want something too. You know, and um, so she's away, like I said, at, at this um, Hindu. So my daughters and their boyfriends are getting together. They're doing a, they do a games night every now and again, um, and they all take food. And um, they're doing a cocktail night tonight, and they've, they've all picked a colour of cocktail. And then their snacks, like sweets and things like that, they, they will take. They're theming to match with the colour of their cocktails. So I think one of them's doing red cocktail, so all the sweets and stuff they bought are red. I think crisps as well, like chili, heatwave, Doritos, that kind of stuff, you know, like that. So, <laughs> my eldest daughter, who's hosting, put a message in the chat the other day saying, Dad, I didn't realise Mum was away um, this weekend. Would you like to come over um, and join in games night? Which was a lovely gesture. And what she meant by that was, we don't want you to bring your own. We know, you know, we now know that, or I now know, that mum's gone away for the weekend. I don't want you to be sat at home on your own because everyone's going to be over here. Would you like to come over? <laughs> Mrs. CDP read that as, if we'd been at home, we wouldn't have been invited. But because Mrs. CDP was away, I got invited over. No, that's not, it's always that thing, you can always take it, you know, anything that gets said, you can take two ways. You can, or, you know, just made me laugh um so i don't know i'm, I'm not sure i i'm i'm not a big cocktail drinker i'm not <laughs> so I, I don't know i might go it's a very lovely offer but they're all you know i don't want to you know it's like a thing of encroaching i love the fact all my kids get, get together with their boyfriends and they they'll go on holidays they'll spend time together they'll go out nights out they'll go to restaurants they'll have n nights in like games nights i love the fact they all get on so well with each other that they will spend time with each other you know, not forced, you know, that thing, we're having a family do, everyone's going to come over. I love that. But also, I don't I don't want to encroach on that. I don't want to be that, that parent that, you know, if ever my kids do it, I must be invited, I must be there. That's, no, not at all. I know when I was growing up, and, you know, if we were having friends over and stuff like that, when we first moved into our house, it wasn't that thing of, we're going to have a barbecue, we must invite my mum and dad. It was like, well, no, because you've got your friends coming over. Why would you want your mum and dad there? You know, it's a bit, I don't know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. So, next up, rolling. I'll get that done. Um, and then hopefully, I'm, I mean, I've saved myself, well, 13 grand, 12, 12 and a half grand, by leasing that sensor rather than... Um, rather than buying them, which I could do at some point. We'll get those collected or take them. Actually, you know what? I can deliver that spaghetti. That'll add a little bit more into the coffers, won't it? I'm just hoping by the end of this episode I can get the rolling done, get the biogas plant in, and then get up to the... Um, I need to give us a bit of a whoosh to... Um, get up to the animal dealer and... Um, if I can remember where the points are. Actually, I might use my... Um, my new pit, uh, pup trailer on the back of the dump truck. And I can put maybe, oh no, I can't put slurry, can I? Mm -hmm. um, I'll put manure in one. You know, I need a slurry tanker, aren't I? Ah, that's not going to work. I could lease one, but that's just all more money. I'll give it some thought. While I do some jet whooshing. We've loaded up spaghetti, just topped up the water again, because that is actually chugging away a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. Oh no, I had a bit in here already, didn't I? I had, a, I had something, a thousand and something in here. Um, but it is chugging, that's good. So uh, we'll be able to sell that. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah. Roller. I have leased at the cost of 300 and something um, uh, tank. Um, I think it's one of the Matana ones. Um, so what I'll do is I'll grab the um, dump truck, go down to the store, grab the, the 
tank that I've just leased because that, that can hook on the back of it and then we'll go up to the animal dealer get the bits we need that's obviously once I've got the um I suppose all I, all I need to do I just want the factories the rest of the day I want the factories running with electricity I don't want to go another day with them all sort of stuttering away and not running properly but I suppose the, the most logical thing to do would be just to jump into April because I'll have tomorrow's coal tomorrow's coal delivery could be 50 grand that will cover the cost of the biogas plant I guess that makes more sense I'm kind of scrabbling around for money thinking oh I need you know because in my head I, I'm, I'm thinking I, I need them running more effectively today but I don't I've, I've got the whole rest of my life to let them run you know it could be another five years or whatever it won't be but it could be so we'll get this rolled and we'll be good now with this field sorted we can let it go like I do with so many other things This is another one. I mean, I mean, farming generally. I think, like I said, because the sort of person I am, like Mrs. Cillipede's always said, because I'm, you know, mildly OCD. I mean, I think I'm quite bad, but I know when I've said about stuff before, people have messaged and said, oh, you know, barely, you know. And, and it's like, I suppose, that anything, I'm on, on the spectrum of OCD somewhere on it. I think everyone is with some things. It depends what it is. But she said, because that, that, fastidiousness, I don't do it with everything. And you'll probably see people go, what are you talking about? But sometimes, not leaving things, you know, and having to finish something off or do it in a particular way or a specific order, you know. Doing something like this, farming work, where, you know, like you're going up and down a field all day, like I said, bale stacking, I just, it just sounds perfect to me. <laughs> just, oh, I would love it, absolutely love it. Hire a worker. I don't know. I haven't decided what to do. Yet. Just enjoying it. Oh, great demand. What for? I don't have much actually. Do I? What have I got? Seeds. A little bit of oats left in the in the silo, and that's it. <laughs> I don't, yeah, don't think it really matters. Not much point having a look at that. So I guess the biogas plant is the cheap. It's the cheapest alternative to look at. I mean, other than getting a load more, like I said, a load more generators, diesel run generators, rather than jumping straight to refinery. But I'm I'm definitely going to get the small refinery and try it. We'll try this first. At the end of the day, if it doesn't work, we've still got our biogas plant. It's still going to produce digest data. You know, worst case scenario, we're going to get a, bio, a running biogas plant on the site, which we can put stuff in and get digest data. I, th I think it does methane. That's the point. I think it does methane as well. Um, and if we set that to selling, assuming it does it as three separate things, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. It's that thing again, like I said before, when people message you or you talk about something and. You know, often if I if I've got an idea in my head of something I want to do on a you know on a farm that I'm operating, I will trawl through the mod tub. I'll tr you know all the various different things I'm thinking of, and I will trawl through. And it all depends on what category it's end up being put in, because you know it could be under packages, it could be under gameplay, it could be under factories, it could be under you know whatever it might be you're looking for. Sometimes silos, so you kind of scour through looking for things. And you often miss stuff, but obviously sometimes you look on it and you look at the description. The description doesn't always say. And then people say to me, but you did a mod review on it. I've, I've done thousands of mod reviews on thousands and thousands of mods. I, I honestly, it gets to a point, you, I can't remember. I, I've lost track of the amount of biogas plants we've looked at. Especially when like the modular biogas plant came out and you know all the pumps and hoses stuff, which still, that just boggles my mind. And it's one of those things that if you use it a lot, if you play with it a lot and it, be, you beca it becomes second nature to you because you're using it all the time like anything that's normal and then people say oh it's easy and it, i think that's one of, when i was teaching that's one of the most frustrating things to hear um 
from anybody. And it's one of those things that when I was teaching, you you never say you never say to somebody, "Come on, it's easy." No, it's not. It might be easy for you. It doesn't mean it is for the person you're talking to. And again, it's that thing of if you go and you you're talking to a professional. You know, when you go to the hospital for something and you've got a specialist that deals in X, Y, Z, whatever, it might be, and they'll talk to you. I've said this before, you know, about various different times I've been to hospital for various different things, pregnancies and that kind of stuff and whatever it might be. And you get spoken to, and the person that's talking to you can often be dismissive because to them it's what they do day in, day out. It's, it's what they know it inside out. And they know that whatever they're saying to you, whatever it is that's wrong with you, you haven't got to worry about it. It's okay. But you don't know that. You're terrified. Um, so it's that thing of, you know, I've always, with my kids, always said, look, you know, if, if you're not sure how to do something, you can ask me, I can show you, as long as I know how to do it. Um, once I've shown you, have a go yourself. If you're still not 100% certain, I've got no problem with you asking me again. It might be I didn't explain it properly, it might be you're just struggling to get to grips with it. Um, but when you show someone again and again and again and again, then it gets to the point you're like, okay, I'm not even sure you're even listening to what I'm saying, that you're not absorbing what I'm saying. Or it might just be that sometimes you get something that just goes beyond your capability to deal with. You know, it might be that the way you, you think about things, the way and you say the way you're wired up, and that sounds really weird, but the way your brain deals with things, there are people that learn in very different ways. And I've said that before, you've got visual learners, you've got auditory learners, you've got kinesthetic learners. You know, someone can listen to something and go, oh yeah, okay, bang, off they go. Um, someone's visual, they have to see it. There has to be a display, a description, someone's showing you. That's why YouTube videos are normally quite handy for that kind of thing. And then some people are kinesthetic learners, and kinesthetic learners are people that you have to, ha you have to be hands-on. You have to be doing it to be able to see it in front of you. It's no good just having a picture on a screen or someone on a YouTube video showing you, you need to be hands-on, touching the things. It needs to be tactile. So that thing of, you know, it might be to you the most simple thing in the world. Your brain just gets it. You know, I've, I've mentioned this before, my, my uh, Mississippi P's brother. Um, he's a computer genius, is anyway I can describe him. And the way I've always described him to other people, my best friend Steve is the same. They see in the matrix that thing of, you know, it's just the things they do and can do and understand. Now I don't doubt with years and years and years of learning and reading and practicing and doing it. And it's the sort of things, but some people just have in, an innate ability to do certain things. They just grasp it so much quicker and so much easier. Um, and other people don't, you know. Some people w will be maths and, and just absolutely that kind of stuff, no problem at all writing spelling absolutely no problem at all other people are more mechanical they're more it's got to be hands-on it's got to be a you know a more physical based thing um and i get that sometimes i've gone way off tangent i know i have um but sometimes when mods come out and i'll be going through trying to work out how it works so i can do a mod video to show other people and say look this is how this works and sometimes i'll be going through thinking like i said you reach an age <laughs> <laughs> where when one thing new goes in something old goes out you, you just you've just reached capacity for knowledge and sometimes i'll be doing things thinking i i'm not retaining this at all i i'm, I'm my bro i can't work out you know i've gone through it all i've made all my notes and it's just not registering it's not clicking you know and sometimes that's just the case that's just the way it, it goes so um i don't i don't know what my point was originally but if you've gleaned anything from that at all <laughs> If it's just, never say to somebody, oh, it's easy. Because that makes that person feel horrendous, just awful, you know? Because they then feel inferior. They feel that they're useless. They feel that they can't cope with whatever it is. And that's, no, that's not true at all, you know? The best thing to do is say to someone um, without, and, and be honest. Just say, look, I don't want to come across as being rude or make you feel bad or make you, you know, I don't want you to feel awful. Do you need me to explain it in a different way? Do you need me to show you? Would it be better if I... Don't, you know, be honest. Have a conversation about it, you know? Never be afraid to say to somebody, look, I'm, I, you know, if, if you... Know, it was one of those things you'd say in a classroom to, of kids, has anyone got any questions? Of course no one put their hands up, you know? And there was always that thing you'd have to oppose Paul's parents. And you'd, you'd rather than say, you know, put your hands up, 
Um, because no one, if you didn't know or you were scared or you were nervous or you didn't want to answer a question, of course you wouldn't put your hands up. Um, so a thing of, no, you know, I don't want people putting their hands up because all that is is, you know, the, the people that want to show off will put their hands up and answer all the questions. So to make sure people are understanding and they're listening all the time, you just say, look, no, at the end, I'm going to ask you questions. So you've got to be paying attention because you don't know if you're going to be asked. And I would always say to people, if I'm going to ask you a question in the classroom, if I ask you something and you genuinely don't know the answer, if what I've been saying you struggle to comprehend, again, it might be the way I've put it across, never be afraid to say, look, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand. I, uh, you know, when this, the lesson starts, could you spend five minutes with me just going through this again? Because there's nothing worse than being put on the spot and then sitting there and going bright red, feeling embarrassed, feeling stupid. Never feel stupid, never feel embarrassed. If you, if you don't know, just say, look, I'm, I, I, I'm struggling to get my head around this. You know, I might need five minutes more. I might, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know, like I say, everybody learns at different paces. Everyone, you know. <sighs> Education talk with Mr. Silly P. I am by no means an expert, but these are just things I've gleaned and learned over the years. Anyway, I'm going to get her on rolling. Um, we'll see how we go with the liquid fertiliser. We'll get spaghetti delivered, and then oh, I may jump to April one, um, and we'll go and get this. We'll get this biogas plant sorted out before the end of the episode. I wanted to get this field done. I said at the end of the last episode, that's what I would do. Um, we would get this done. I'm very conscious of the fact that it's been factory heavy and productions heavy and pallet heavy, and you know. And I said, I want to try all these things out, but I know there's farming. That's another reason why that money I'd earned, I say earned, I just picked up a load of lime and sold it. I wanted to buy this field. I wanted to make it bigger because I was very conscious. I wanted some more. I, I wanted more farm. It's quarter to three in the afternoon. The rolling is all done. The concentrate has all run through and I've got a full tank. I had some in it already. I, I must have, when I said I didn't unload, I didn't do a sale the other day. Um, I had some in the tank already in here, which I didn't realize I had So Anyway, doesn't matter, we're full. I think there's a little bit left over there, but we'll just deliver this. This should, he says. <laughs> This should take us over the required amount to get the biogas plant, and hopefully, I don't think manure and stuff will be particularly expensive. I don't think it will be. It's not normally up at the animal dealer. And then, if it will take the straw bales, we'll just get a load of stuff loaded in there. And um, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, we should be right, shouldn't we? I'm just looking at it. Bottom right, top right. I mean, just. Okay, we'll be alright, 40 grand, that's not bad. We'll be down to, once we put it in, was it 55? Oh, okay, yeah, we are going to be <laughs> close to the way. But again, as we go into April, we'll have, April's coal. Um, hopefully we'll have some more stuff. Let's like, say so all the stuff, oh, we'll have the marble blocks and all this, but yeah, nothing's ready because nothing's got electricity. <laughs> karma be karma in people, karma be karma -in. I've been watching, I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, um, I've said about all these various different channels, and I watch um, Demolition Ranch, uh, Matt Carricker, and it was um, Off the Ranch, which then I think it's just Matt Carricker now, it's his channel. And watching his channel, I've watched a few other different people. Yeah, he had on his channel the Holden Brothers, which are near where he is. And on Discovery, the Holden Brothers had um, one series so far of them doing restorations and rebuilds and stuff like that, and they're brilliant, incredibly funny guys. I think they just starting their YouTube channel or they've had it going a little while now and um, he went and did the Cletus and Cars thing Cletus McFarlane I haven't watched a lot of his stuff and they go and they do these big car shows and there was um, Derek Bieri or Derek Bieri um, from Vice Grip Garage Vice Grip Garage from the UK 
um, well, what we would say in the UK, but he's American. Um, and he had a, a series popped up on Discovery. So I watched that, brilliant. And I thought, why haven't I watched any Vice Grip Garages YouTube? Oh man, I'm addicted. I absolutely, the guy is brilliant and hilariously funny. And Mrs. DDP watched some with me before she went away and she said he, he said he's very much like me. His sense of humor, the things he says, the weird sort of look into camera and stuff like that. Um, I'm, yeah, have become mildly obsessed <laughs> with, um, you know what it's like when you find a YouTube channel or YouTube you really like and you just binge watch. I'm curious to see how much have I got left in here? Oh, okay, more than I thought. Oh, that's all right. I could go and take this and sell it then. Huh? That's a lot. I'm not knocking it. Um, it does give me a little bit. I can go and sell. So, I'm going to put it in over in this little triangle over here. As I said, when this field gets... Um, harvested i'm going to extend the field out but i'm going to do it around this corner i'm picking that corner because that corner has been lopped off where the roadway goes that corner slopes up to the trees over there this corner slopes down there's not really a flat spot but over here it is i mean it's fairly flat i mean i think we should be all right so i'm going to put our little mini biogas plant in here So we've got the Kemp weather system up in Mars. And like I was saying, it was Nina that sort of, you know, a few people have messaged about very different things, but Nina was, you know, John on the spot, so maybe this will be uh, Nina's biogas, we'll call it. I think we're going to put it on here. That's the plan. I don't know if I've got my, have I got my pop sound back? I can't remember. Did I get it back or not? Anyway, this is where it's going to go. Yep, still got it. <laughs> so. Let's have a check on this because I'm not certain. Uh, incoming, silage, slurry, manure, sugar beet cut, sugar beet, potatoes, cool, straw, yes, out electric charge, methane out, awesome. Um, I might just set that to selling actually and digestate and we could set all of it, that to distribute, I'm going to set that to distributing now, that to selling, we'll set that to selling, we don't need any digestate at the moment. Um, I'll tell you what though, that's not bad. Um, I'm just looking at silage is a good recipe for electricity isn't it oh we need silage where am I going to get that from right first thing to check then can I put bales I'll go and go and grab my wheel loader bring a bale over or a couple of bales and see if we can get bales in here then we'll whiz up to the animal dealer. We'll grab some slurry and some manure. We'll bring that over. Where can I buy silage? Oh, hang on. What am I talking about? I've got silage bales. I stored them, didn't I? Did I keep some or did I sell them all? I don't know. I think I might have done. Right. I just realised I kept one, didn't I? I sold them all. Oh, you muppet. No. Maybe we'll get some more. I'm surprised, actually, we're into March. We haven't had any more bailing contracts. Right, I need a silage bailing contract. <laughs> Anyone knows locally of a silage bailing contract? That'd be absolutely fantastic. Maybe if we go into April, we get one. We'll crack on with that, and we'll get any spare bales over into there. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, so we need from here let's grab a couple here there we go uh, we want square bale straw I don't want 15 let's go with two bales to start off with there we go let's grab this let's give it a spin <laughs> this really does need to reverse faster That almost got the angle spot on. Oh, maybe not. That's weird.
If it does work, brilliant, and I'll come, I'll come and get some more, but I'm just thinking the more things I can have running that are producing, <laughs> the more chance we've got of it distributing. I always get that strap click sound, but I don't see any straps on there. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We're down to 12 grand people, 12 grand, but we'll be all right. Once everything starts running properly, we could be millionaires. How many Let's Plays have I said that on? I mean, quite a few of them, we reach a point where we hit that, that you know, we hit millionaire status. Some of them, it's not been about that. Like this one's not, I'm not, not really, I would, like I said, I just want to try out a load of the productions. I'm not really bothered about whether we hit millionaire or not. That's not really what it's about. Now, do I try and put them in front or in? Because there's a risk if I put them in and it doesn't work. Let's do that. No. It is strapped. There we go. Yes. No. Yes. Right. So... Let's get that running. <laughs> we can put some more straw in. We've got straw. Awesome. Whoa, look at that. That's fast. Get in. Right, I'm going to go and get some more straw. Um, we'll get that loaded up. Then we'll whiz up to get the... Go and get the dump truck. Go and grab the trailer I leased. We'll go up to the animal dealer. Uh, if I can remember where the points are to get the stuff from. We'll bring that down. Get that running. And we should be okay. I mean, that's... That's my plan. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I wonder if I can... Can I change it? Let me just go into here. Go to here. Rename. Absolutely. Cool! There we go. Nina's Biogas. Subcontracting in. Helping us out. Awesome! Oh yeah, that was something. She messaged me a little while ago. May the 4th be with you, everyone. Happy Star Wars Day. I forgot all about it. I'm sitting in my man cave and I've got various different bits of Star Wars paraphernalia around me. I forgot. Completely forgot. Lost track of time, space and all that kind of stuff. I've had this conversation before. Star Trek or Star Wars? Where do you fall? I'm both. I've had this conversation many times. I, I've, I've never been a believer in your one or the other, but I, I think you can be both. Absolutely, you can be both. I love them all. Um, yeah, everything. It's <laughs> all of it. <laughs> all the various different uh, series. I mean, I soak up sci-fi stuff like nobody's business, but um, they are, especially, you know, I, I grew up on the, um, I say the, the OG, OG Star Wars, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, with William Shatner. My dad was obsessed with it, and we used to watch it all the time. Absolutely loved it. And the Star Wars, the first Star Wars film, I think I was four when that came out. I've had this conversation as well. Now I never got to go and see it at the cinema when it first came out. Not long after, I think I was a little bit older. I might have been five or six, I think, when I first saw it. Because um, we were, we were, in, my cousins, we were in Devon on holiday, and when it came out. The older cousins all got to go, and we were too young. I remember being absolutely devastated um, and not being able to go and see it. Anyway, all that being said, yeah, I love both, absolutely. Love them, love them to bits. And then you've got all the subsections and all that. The latest series, I go, I've said this recently, Picard, wow, awesome. Uh, Strange New Worlds, been loving that. Discovery, wow. Um, and I remember I've watched all of Voyager and all... I, I watched a bit of Deep Space Nine. I was never as big a fan of Deep Space Nine. I mean, I liked it, but I don't remember watching as much of it. Um, how's that looking? Okay, I don't think we'll get it all in. Oh, yeah. See, now my worry is we've got a lot of electrical charge building up there, which is awesome. But if that all goes to the wrong place... <sighs> but the fact we're getting methane and we're going to start to sell... How much it'll make us, I don't know, but it'll make us a bit of money. So, um... 
Alles gut. I put that silage bale in the moment we had 7,500 litres. I tell you what, it is absolutely hooning through. Um, it looks like when we went over three o'clock, it did disperse. I think it's just having enough to disperse. I'm not sure where I've got to go to for this. So I've got, I, I bought the double over. I thought I was just going to bring one, but I thought, you know what, why not? We'll just double up on the, um, on the, the uh, manure. I think it's both over there, isn't it? What we'll do is let's detach that. So at least that, and luckily they've all got um, all got trailer hitches, so all good. Just whether or not I can, whether or not I can thread the needle. so people know I'm a danger to everyone around me. <laughs> there we go. How much is this going to cost? Oh, I got rid of that last bit of that 3,000 litres of liquid fertiliser as well. So um, it shouldn't... It's not normally too expensive to buy manure and stuff. Obviously, some um, animal dealers have the ability to go and buy it. There are a few placeables knocking around as well that you can put down which give you the ability to buy and I often place those at animal dealers because it just adds that you know of course there's going to be muck and stuff if you've got animals there actually no it's not going to be too bad at all is it I'm just thinking of what we're going to get out of it it's worth every penny and how do we, if we were running cows and pigs and stuff like that we'd have we'd have loads of it but I'm not running animals at the moment so this is the obvious solution to said problem I think I'm going to have to I think that tractor has a collision. I'm just wondering whether I could... I don't really want to back through that tractor because that would be... I'll say that would be unrealistic, but, you know... People go, oh, you're always unrealistic anyway. I don't, why is it? Uh, isn't it funny? The amount of YouTubers I watch doing different things. And, um... No, wrong. There we go. Um, it always makes me smile when people do impressions of people complaining. Why do people always do weird voices? I don't... I'm sure the people that complain are very normal people. They're just... <laughs> with very normal voices, I would imagine. Oh. <laughs> Done. Right, so then we'll go. I'll just hook onto the tanker, then we'll just try that as well. Get it all down there. Actually, I'm just thinking I might have left that rear pup in the way. Potentially. Whoa! Brakes are good. Unlike the pickup. Oh, unlike my reversing. Boom! Again, hopefully not too expensive. Excellent stuff. Won't be long. Go make yourself a cup of tea. Get yourself a biscuit, whatever you want to do. Once we get down there, get this all off, on, uh, offloaded, unloaded. Um, that's all I had planned. That's I just wanted to. Get, I wanted to get the electricity. I needed electricity. I wanted to get the electricity sorted, um, and that will be that will be done. So 
I'll be happy with that. And then, like I say, hopefully, as we go into April, we might get some more contracts. I'm hoping, like I say, silage bailing contracts, that would be awesome. Whereas before, I wasn't too fussed. I was just using it as revenue making or whatever I was doing with it. Um, now we can put it into our biogas plant. That's absolutely, that'll be an absolute godsend. I just hope, because I had one lot that came up. Oh, that was the thing I was going to say. One lot came up and it was all silage bailing. The next time it was all hay bailing. Well, I think I had one silage bailing contract. Now, production, farm production pack from Giants that came out and everyone's aware there have been issues and problems and you know, some of it works, some of it doesn't and updates have been rolling out. You know, I think Farming Simulator 22 has updated three times in the last week. I've had, I'm sure it's three updates I've had. And I said in the last episode about not having um, any vehicles in the used vehicle store. I had people reaching out saying they have the same problem since the farm production pack came out, since the last update. I'm also concerned because I've got no contracts. Now, as we go into April, we might get some contracts. It could be just because there's nothing on the fields that needs doing at the moment. There might be no fields available to do anything on. I'm really concerned. It's that thing of so many options, so many choices, so many things that can cause other things. The old mod conflict problem. Um, you change one thing and it can affect hundreds more. You know, it's it becomes a fine balance. And I think um, giants walk that tightrope a lot. Um, and from what I gather, I think with regard to obviously the DLC, which hasn't gone down particularly well, I've been getting loads of comments and messages from people who are angry and frustrated and I understand that um, but I think they're also with FS22 FS25 in production I think there's a lot of you know there's a lot of bouncing backwards and forwards because obviously for what we're thinking you know we may we're in May brilliant in real life I mean we're in, we're May, March in the game but May in real life the new version of the game is due out November, late November, maybe December, but you know, it's not a lot of time. You think, oh, it's a few months away, but I suppose in respect of game development and stuff, it's not. It's another reason why um, uh, mods releases have been few and far between, sparse. Sometimes you'll get a week where you get them every day. Sometimes you'll get a week, you might get two sets of mods come out in a week. Some weeks we haven't had any, you know. And I, I, I totally understand why. And again, it's that thing, there is so much going on. There, there is so much to balance. And you do your coding. Yeah, like I say, I'm, I'm no coder, I'm no game developer, I'm, I'm no mod maker, anything like that. But you make one change to, to something and the potential effects of that one change it could be exponential moving forward. And it can change so much and it can cause untold amounts of problems or it could work perfectly you know we shall see won't we right so i'm hoping this is just to be a simple case of pull up in front and uh, do a bit of the old do the do so to speak i might go and get some more slurry depends how much there we go slurry in it's a small it's a small it's a, it's a mini biogas plant uh it took twenty thousand liters will it take more oh yeah so I could go and buy some more. It wasn't too expensive. I might just fill. Yeah, look how much electric charge we got. Boom! The silage bale. It's, it's all. It's honking through. It's honking through the stuff. So hopefully a massive load like that, even if it distributes a bulk of it out to one or two, there's enough going to be in there on the hour that it will. I don't know. I just I say I, I'm just fingers crossed. But I will go and get some more slurry. I think I'll, I'll get a few loads of that and top that right up. Uh, I need to, I've got to work out. Yeah. Let's disconnect that for the moment. Swing back around. It's all right, it's my own field of driving over, don't worry. Uh, then we need to switch from, no. I don't know, I'll just keep pressing the triangle button until I get something come up. There we go. Let's get that in. Again, we'll see how much is here because if it's not too bad, I might um I might go back and just do another load. If I haven't filled it completely. 
yeah that silage bale is just just demolishing it i could probably get away with another load of each and probably some more slurry uh let's turn the slurry on manure on and then we've got these bales still left over i moved them out of the way i was going to leave them on the trigger i thought well no because i need to unload all this stuff um so fingers crossed on the hour we should have so much electric charge that everything will get something and it will move forward. Have I solved the problem? I say I. <laughs> Potentially. I'm going to glass. I'm going to go. I'm going to fill these up again. I might do that a couple more times. I'm not too sure. And uh, yeah, I'll probably see you in April. And hopefully everything will be running at some point we're going to get concrete blocks and bars and beams and metal and cables and sawn marble and all sorts of cool stuff to have a look at i just want to get one of each out if we get one of each out awesome i'll be happy then everything can just run as it goes and if we move forward um yeah, let's draw off this and come into here and whatever we need to do and um, what i probably will do Oh, I'll worry about that later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your Star Wars day, whatever, whatever you might be doing. If you may not like Star Wars or Star Trek at all, you might, might not be a sci-fi person. Enjoy your Saturday, whatever you end up doing, whatever you are doing. I hope you have a great time, whether it's on your own, with friends and family, or just friends, or just family, or whatever. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it well not useful and informative but i just hope you've enjoyed the episode if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as always thanks for watching